This is the day that the Lord has brought. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. I like to say good morning to each and every one of you. I like to say good morning to my pastor, his family, my church family, my family, my sisters and my brothers in Christ. This is the day that the Lord has brought. It's a new day, the dawning of this morning, found the blood still running warm in our veins, and we still have an opportunity to give thanks unto the Lord. On yesterday, Saturday, we funeralized my sister, and uh, had some uh, second guessing going on within my spirit on whether I'll be able to do a message. And my mind went to King David as he laid upon his bed and he prayed and he petitioned God and he fasted while his son that was shaped in iniquity and born in sin was sick. But my Bible tells me that after the child died, he got up, he anointed himself, he changed his clothes, and he did eat. And the servants had a, had a question for him. He says, Well, why, uh, while the child was sick, you laid there, you wouldn't do anything? He said, No. He said, I prayed and I fasted while the child was here that God in his providential will may have spared the child. But now that the child has gone home, then it's time for me to get up, prepare myself to meet the child. Because the child can't come back to me. But through the grace and mercies of God, I may be able to meet the child. The message this morning is coming from Luke, the gospel according to Luke chapter 15, I believe. Gospel according to Luke, we're going to start, we're going to discuss these three parables that Christ gave us to lead us uh, back to God. Uh, Luke chapter 15, the first parable Christ talks about is the parable of the lost sheep, he talks about the parable of the lost coin, and he talks about the prodigal son. All those are in Luke 15. Seems like everywhere Jesus went, there was always some drama. Someone always had something negative to say about Jesus, our Christ. They, they always were murmuring and complaining. Uh, he ate with sinners. He sat with sinners. He put his hand on lepers. His disciples, they ate on Sunday. He broke corn on Sunday. He broke wheat on Sunday. It was always something Jesus, where he went. And this parable I'm speaking on this morning is uh, these three parables. We're going to start off with the parable of the lost sheep. So now you find yourself, wherever you find yourself in either one of these parables, it'll be all right. It says, What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one, do not leave the ninety-nine? in the wilderness and go after the one that's lost until he find it. Sheep. We are the sheep of Christ's pastor. We are his sheep. And we also can become lost. Now this particular sheep, this sheep was doing exactly what sheep do. 
Shepherd let him out. He goes out into the pasture. He stops grazing. He got his head down. He's going from place to place, not realizing that the day is now spent. The shadows are now long, and he has come from the umbrella of the shepherd. So when it gets evening time, he looks around and it's evening time. He's no longer under the will of the shepherd. So now he is lost. He's lost. He's out there and he's lost. He has no defenses for himself. He is lost. We get out from under the umbrella of God and we become lost. We become defenseless. We have no one to look after us. But the Bible says when he went out and looked for his sheep, when he went out and searched for his lost sheep, he went in the valleys he went on the hillside. He went on the mountains. And when he found him, he picked him up, laid him upon his shoulder, and brought him back. He didn't scold him. He didn't yell at him. He didn't beat him. He had joy in his heart for finding his lost sheep. And then, he went and got his friends and his neighbors. He said, hey, y'all come and rejoice with me because my sheep that was once lost, now I found them. The angels in heaven rejoice every time a child comes to God. The angels in heaven, they rejoice. So why not you, why not you and I, why shouldn't you and I rejoice every time a child of God returns to the fold or comes to God? We should rejoice in our hearts. We should have joy in our spirit. Because if the angels in heaven can do it, why not you and I? We are here with our brothers and sisters every day. So we should rejoice. And we're going to look at the, this woman who had some coins. It says she had 10 pieces of silver. 10 pieces. And she, she lost one piece. Now she had 10, but she lost one. And, and the Bible states, that she lights a candle. So I can see. Put some light inside my heart. So I can see. And so then she sweeps the house. Notice now. She sweeps her house. The coin is lost in her house. The coin is not lost at the supermarket. The coin is not lost at her neighbor's house. It's lost in her house. So whatever God has placed in you and you have lost it, first look in your house. Sweep your house. You don't have to go to nobody else's house. We have enough trouble in our lives. We don't have to go out and search for them. So this woman, she diligently, diligently, until she found it, searched her house. She was looking inside herself. You and I each, we should be looking inside ourselves every day. Not only for a lost home, but for whatever we have lost in Christ. And the Bible says, likewise, I say unto you, there's joy 
in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repent. In this uh, last parable, we're talking about uh, we lead off, we call it the parable of the prodigal son. I'm not going to look on the, on the, on the prodigal side uh, so hard as one of the wasteful side. We know that he wasted it with uh, the father had given him. We know that part very well. This particular son, what he decided to do, he says, you know what, Dad? He says, uh, I've been toiling here. And I've been going back and forth uh, with you. He says, let me have my portion. What, what's deserving of me? Let me have mine. In our lives, God has blessed us with things because everything that we have above nothing came from God. He said, I gave you the knowledge to gain the wealth. I gave you the help to go in and out, to go to and fro. It all comes from God. But the young man said, Dad, let, let me have what is deserving of me. I want to get mine. I want to go out into the world. And we find individuals like that in our lives, in our everyday lives. We can see uh, someone having a talent for singing. Uh, most of uh, the old gospel, the old soul singers came out of the church. Rita Franklin, Sam Cooke, Otis Redding. You know, they, they came out of the church. And they took their talents to the world. And once the world have consumed them, once the world have consumed them, the flower of their lives, the candle of their lives have been burned out, then they come back and blow the smoke in the face of the true and living God. Once the flower has faith, then they come and give God the stems of their lives. But as we look at this son here, we can find, we, you can find yourself, I know I can find mine. So after the father had divided his, what he had uh, between the sons, this particular son goes out, he says he's go, he goes to a foreign land. A foreign land can be the next town over. A foreign land don't have to be Europe. A foreign land don't have to be Sweden. A foreign land can be down a little further in your neighborhood. It doesn't have to be another country. But he goes to a foreign land, to a far, to a far country. And there he wasted what God had given him what his father had given him. He waits. The Bible says on the riotous living, fast living. And when all that he had had been spent, there came a famine. Isn't that something? While you got a few dollars in your pocket, everything is rolling along, seems to be pretty good. But soon as trouble comes, you find yourself in a place of want. And the reason I look at why you find why we find ourselves in a place of want is because we forgot the one who put us in the place that we were in in the beginning. So now he finds himself in this place of want, place of need. He, he's, in, he's in deep trouble now. He's in deep trouble. I have no money. I have no friends. I'm far from home. So what I do, I said, you know what? Let me go and see if this, if this citizen, if this guy that lives here, see if he'll give me a job. You know, I said, man, I, let me do something. You know, let, let me see a bunch of bonds. You know, let, 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 let me trash some brass some wheat. And I said, the only thing I got for you, young fella, is to Feed my swines. 
and for a Jew, sweet feeding swine is the lowest of the low. For a Jewish boy to feed swine, that means not only him, but if that was your job, you could even worship with the regular folks at the temple. You had to find you a time to worship your God because you were invited to the temple. You, you, were, you were like an outcast, almost bad as having lepers. You were not invited to the temple. And as he was feeding these swine, he's, he, he's hungry, and, uh, and anyone who, who's seen uh, Pixie, Pixie may know us when they, they, they go at it, they have, they're having a good time while they eat. And he's sitting there and he says, man, I'm so hungry, I should eat some of these pies. But he knows that uh, it can even be death to him for even taking some of what the swine has to eat. It could be detrimental to him. So as he is contemplating this, as he's thinking about this, he comes to himself. And he says, you know what? My father, even his servants, have more than enough. We come to ourselves and realize God has more than enough. He has enough for you. He has enough for the neighbor. He has enough for the ones down the street. So he's got enough for me. When we come to our senses and say, you know what? I'm going to go back to God. I'm going to go back. And now, you notice this now. The shepherd went out and he looked for the sheep. The woman lit a candle, swept her floor, and looked for the corn. But we, being made a little lower than the angels, each one of us have been given the measure of faith. That rised up in that young man. And he says, you know what? I remember. I remember the teaching of my father, the teaching of my mother, that there is a God and he has more than enough for me. So now I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to my father. And I'm going to tell him. I said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Lord, I've sinned before you and I've sinned before the spirit of Jesus Christ. I've sinned against my earthly father. I've sinned against my heavenly father. I have sinned against my redeemer. But look what the Bible says right here. And, and, and while, he's, while he's going through these things, he says, and I'm no longer worthy to be called a child of God. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. So now I have all these things, all these emotions going on. He got all these emotions going on. So then he arose and he came to his father. See, so, but when he was yet far away, his father saw him coming. And he goes into his petition. He says, Father, I have, sin I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. That's all well and good. Yes, we all got our little, uh, we got our testimony to give to Christ, uh, to back to God. We, you know, we got, uh, we got this prepared speech, but the father cuts him off by hugging him, hugging him, kissing him. You're my son. And when we miss a step, when we fall or drift away from God, 
he is standing waiting for us to come back. Because Jesus says, I have come to seek that which was lost. So that's my purpose. To, seek, to find and seek that which was lost. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. So the young man was lost, came to the senses, and look where he's at. And when we return to Christ, look what he has for us. He said, bring him a robe because he's righteous. Bring him, the, bring him the best robe. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Slaves were shoes were shoeless, so put shoes on his feet. Let him know that he's no longer a slave, that he's not a slave to sin, that he's not a slave to this world. Put a ring on his finger. Signifying his royalty. Our robe is a robe of righteousness that came through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I don't know which one of these lost things you are this morning. If you're a lost sheep that had your head down too long and strayed away, your coin that rolled off of the shelf and is hidden. Because as long as it's hidden, it can't be used. Whether you are a child of God who have strayed away and went out into the world and the world seemed like it has consumed you, all you have to do is turn to Jesus. Because the only way to the Father is through the Son. I've done what thus says the Lord. May the Lord bless and keep you is my prayer. Father, in the name of your son Jesus, we come this morning with bowed head, humble hearts. Father, we come laying out before thee. Father, we come not knowing what to ask, what the petition would be, but Father, you know the condition of our hearts, the condition of our minds. Father God, we know that you have us in your everlasting care, and we thank you for that. Father, we thank you for touching us this morning and starting us on this day, one we have never seen before. Father, we glad we would like to say thank you. Father, the days ahead, they may be filled with dread, they may be filled with sorrow. But Father God, we know that you hold this day and tomorrow in your hands. Father, as we come <clears throat> asking, as we come petitioning, we first give thanks to your son who came down the stairways of heaven died on Calvary's cross for a sinner such as I. We thank you. We lift you up. We glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat>